Over the next several videos, we're gonna be looking at how do we improve the steady state error via cascade compensation. So we had all of these sort of different uh, pairs that we could choose from. So we're looking at our cascade compensation instead of feedback. And initially here, we're gonna be looking at how to improve our steady state error. And we're gonna come back later and talk about how we can get a desired transient response. And then the last sort of pair to consider is noted here where we're gonna look at two techniques to do this. The first is with using pure integration. And so remember if we have pure integration, that's going to require active components. So it's going to be more expensive to implement. However, we're gonna be able to drive that steady state error to zero. And the second option is to use a system without pure integration. And so this is going to be cheaper to implement because we can use passive components, so our resistors, capacitors, inductors, as opposed to our op amps with our active components. However, the drawback of that is that we can't drive that steady state error to zero. So before we get into more details of this, let's talk about some terminology that we're going to be using throughout the rest of this sort of unit here. So some important terminology. So, Three things, we're gonna talk about sort of our, go into that PID terminology a little deeper. So if we have some system that is feeding the error uh, forward to the plant, so systems that feed the error forward to our plant or our process, we're gonna call that a proportional control system. And so it doesn't necessarily need to be the, the pure error, it can be some, of course, some gain times that error. So this is our proportional control system. Okay, so that's sort of our first one there. So the second case is if our system is feeding the integral of the error forward. So systems that feed the integral, so now we're not talking about just the error, but the integral of the error. So integral of, write that a little better. So integral of the error forward and still forward to the plant or process. We're gonna call integral control systems. And so what we're gonna see is that of course in our frequency domain, if we're taking the integral in the time domain that corresponds to dividing by S in our frequency domain. So we're gonna see that in our block diagrams a little later on. And then the final one is if, we're, if we have some system that is feeding the derivative of the error to the plant, that's going to be a derivative control system. So that feeds the derivative of the error forward so that is our derivative control system and so what we're going to see later on when we're looking at how to adjust our, our transient response is that if we're deriving in the time domain then that corresponds to multiplying by s in our frequency domain so that's what we're going to see in our block diagram so again, we kind of did touch on this, that our, our derivative is going to be associated with adjusting our transient response and our integral is going to be associated with adjusting our steady state error. And then ultimately at the end, we're gonna come back and put all of these together. But right now, because we're just looking at improving our steady state error, so we're sort of ignoring our transient response, what we're going to be looking at is just sort of these first two items. So we're gonna have some proportional part and some integral part. So this first ideal system here, so let's go ahead and call this uh, system one and system two. And so what we're gonna say is that for one, because we have this ideal integral, so let's say, let's come back here and say a system with our active components, which means it's gonna have an ideal integral compensator
then we're gonna call this system a proportional plus integral controller. We're not gonna call the system, we're gonna call the, the compensation this. So this is going to be our proportional plus integral, or of course we're gonna shorten that and just call that PI, so we don't have to write that out each time. So our proportional plus integral controller. So again, this is the case when we have ideal integration. Now, the second system up here where we, we don't have our pure integration, we're using our passive components, we're gonna call this a lag compensator. So if we have, again, this, this non-ideal uh, case, we're not completely eliminating our steady state error, we're gonna call that system a lag compensator. And we're not gonna get into the reasons uh, of why that is, again, just we have limited time this semester, unfortunately. Um, but if you look ahead into chapter 11, you can see why exactly that's called a lag compensator. And again, keep in mind that for system one, we're using our active components, and for system two, we're using our passive components.